Brethren in Christ, Laudetu Jesus Christus in Sequila. This is Timothy Flanders with the Meaning of Catholic. Jesus is King. Welcome to the discussion. Is popular music shamanism? Today we are talking about an essay that I wrote that was uh, released on meaningofcatholic.com. In this show, we're going to go through some of that essay, discuss it. Uh, we're also going to play some music. And uh, you get to see me play music and sing. So that's that's the gimmick today. Um, we are going to switch up the Guild family stream a little bit. Um, what we're going to do is this first 10 minutes or 15 minutes, we're going to release this part publicly. And then the rest of this broadcast will be available only to Guild members. Uh, so the reason for that is that uh, we need to I need to spend the rest of this year raising money for the apostolate uh, to try to get us to a better spot. Uh, this has just been a hard year. So this is what I need to do to get the money for the apostolate. So if you're watching this, that's either publicly available or on the guild stream. Um, you can become a guild member at patreon.com slash meaning of catholic or you can also make a donation at meaningofcatholic.com or if you can't afford it you can always join for free uh just contact me at meaningofcatholic.com slash contact so with that out of the way let's talk about the logos of music um in the essay i described that i grew up obviously listening to music but i was also trained in music from a young age and my area of training is percussion. And so we'll talk a lot about beats and rhythm today and the effects of those things. And uh, for many years, I was a musical enthusiast. I listened to all sorts of music. I performed all sorts of music. Um, everything from classical music to marching music to hip hop music to rock music, to punk rock, um, electronic, all sorts of uh, Afro-Cuban beats, Latino beat, Latin, uh, jazz music, blues, folk. Um, these are things that I studied myself, that I performed myself, or I composed myself, or I was trained in. Um, and over time, I came to uh, really... I appreciated and, and loved all different sorts of music, all different forms. Uh, but over time, I've come to the position that I now hold, which is that there are forms, much of much of popular music is spiritually harmful. Uh, that's just the basics of it. And we'll talk about why I think that is. Um, and it's because there are elements of shamanism in popular music. There's sort of a regime of popular shamanism in the music industry. And I think that if we look at the way the music is performed as a ritual and everything that goes along with it externally, but if we also look internally into the elements of the music itself, I think we can detect this shamanic element. So let's discuss some of the basics of this and then in the guild portion of this show we'll talk further into the intrinsic aspects of this so um first there is a logos of music um and this is something that uh we we discuss in the essay one of the most conspicuous things in melody is the tonal scale, the seven note scale uh, that you may have heard, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Uh, we'll sing that later. We'll do, we'll play that uh, and look at different scale patterns. Um, but this is one of the aspects of the intrinsic logos of music. Because, and, and, and in the essay, we have various examples. In this particular example that's shown on the screen, we have an example of music, which is atonal, which uses a different scale pattern, which provokes 
a feeling of disorientation, a feeling of chaos. When we look at the different intrinsic properties of music and their uses in culture historically, we can see that traditional styles of music have things like have they have different aspects of a logos of a uh, an ordering. One of them is the the seven note scale. Um, but there are others as well, and we can see that there is this form of music according to logos. And we go through in the essay all sorts of different forms of music which operates according to logos. This music is something that lifts one's heart towards God or to one's neighbor. And this, this is one of the basic properties of, of music according to Logos um, because it is either in the music itself, so sacred music lifts the heart to God, lifts the heart to the divine. And this is even true of pagan sacred music. Um, you can see it in various other styles of music that's out there, uh, which is meant to meditate one's heart on the divine. But there's also uh, a sort of a folk music meant, uh, understood in a more general sense in terms of music that people just sing together in a, just a communal aspect. Um, that type of a folk music, what we not 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 to use the modern genre of folk, but rather folk in terms of a cultural terminology, folk um, that has a, a a logos to it because it is something that people brings people together. It has a this sort of communitarian aspect, um, so it lifts one's heart out of oneself to the virtue of eutropelia, which is people together. Uh, having fun together, uh, rejoicing together, giving thanks together. Uh, you know, singing these songs together is something that people allows people to celebrate. Um, and it's something that is based on logos. It's, it has a rational purpose, a rational ordering, and it leads to a rational goal, which is joy, thanksgiving, sometimes patriotism. Um, these are things that have a rational ordering. Um, we think also of ensemble music, something that developed in the West. And, uh, you know, we think of the symphonies of Beethoven or Mozart or Bach um, or the pieces of Bach. Um, they have the property that most characterizes them is the conspicuous property is complexity. It's multiple instruments being used at one time. And this is something where sonic beauty is represented and, and produced. And it's something that really brings the listener out of himself as well, draws his heart towards a sonic musical experience of beauty. And something that really can lift one's heart outside of oneself. And this is something that really you can, it would be contemplating beauty on even on a natural level, but also could lift one's heart lay, later uh, out of that towards God. Now, this is in contrast to traditional shamanism. Now, shamanism, if you look in the essay, so we go through all these different aspects of music according to logos, some of which I've touched on. And they, we, we look at the extrinsic properties of these forms of music in a cultural sense. And we see how sacred music is lifting toward the divine. We have this folk music, which brings people together. Um, we talked about ensemble music. But when we get down to shamanism, shamanism is a, is a religious ritual shamanism is can be considered a religion where the purpose of this religion is to induce demonic possession and the the means by by which shamanism does this is by a form of music which does not lift one's heart towards a rational purpose 
but rather forms an attachment of the heart into an emotional self-absorption. It attaches the heart using the music to one's own emotions or one's own emotional experience so that the heart is trapped within oneself and one becomes self-absorbed in the music. And in this essay, we actually have a video of a Haitian voodoo ceremony. Now, voodoo is a form of shamanism. Shamanism is something that really exists in all sorts of cultures across the world. And so there's the Druidism of Ireland. There's the shamanism of Korea, Korean civilization. There's shamanism all all over the place. And it's all just the same form of a musically induced emotional intoxication, which makes one's heart self-absorbed. And voodoo is simply a West African variety of shamanism. And this is what really makes, I I believe, is the key to understanding our popular music and how it has become poisoned by this shamanic element of in the music. And what's what's interesting is fascinating if you watch this Haitian voodoo ritual is that they're actually using this music to produce a demonic possession. And when this person allegedly becomes demonically possessed, I'm not sure if it's real or not, but it could be real. Um, she exhibits this sort of drunken state where she starts stumbling around the dancers. And this is an evidence of that. She's totally self-absorbed. She, she doesn't care about other people. She's not really aware, self-aware of what's going on. And this is the property that is intrinsic to the music and its purpose, but also the extrinsic context within which that music is played and for what purpose. And we see this same element, this these same properties of shamanism in popular music today. And the best way to notice this, the easiest way, I think, is to actually just try and experiment and just shut off all the popular music. Just stop listening to it for a period of time. Um, months at a time, for example, take a month, take two months, take three months, and then notice what happens to your spiritual life. Notice what happens to your prayers. Um, or notice if you have an attachment to the this particular popular song or this or that thing. Um, and we're going to talk about, so this is the end of the public uh, broadcast. So we're going to talk on the Guild stream in just a minute about some of the intrinsic properties that I think we find in the shamanic varieties. 